So couldn't you argue that because of the because of the fact that we as humans have been left with that I think the perfect word for it is responsibility. The responsibility of finding out whether or not Christianity is correct or what religion is correct. And then to say in the same breath that the God of Christianity does love you and he wants you to go to heaven. If he truly wanted you to go to heaven, why would he leave that responsibility up to us rather than just say, you have your time on earth. Once your time comes and goes, you're up to heaven it is. Yeah. Why would he leave it up to chance? This is a fantastic question. I love this question. It's the same question as why did God put the tree of knowledge of good and evil in the garden, isn't it? Like, why, why did God put the tree there in the first place for Adam and Eve to even be tempted by, right? Right. Because in, in, in some way, that's, that is the temptation right now, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, right? And Well, temptation is more abundant now, I'd say, than it is, has ever been in human history. Sure, I meant more on the meta, metaphorical, philosophical oh, okay. sense. Yeah. Is it's like, this, this is the choice before us, right? And so you would think, okay, Genesis chapter 1 and two, and three, wouldn't that go a lot better if there wasn't a tree? Wouldn't it go a lot better if it's just like Adam and Eve walked with God, and then sin never entered the earth? There was no such thing as snakes, and well, here we are all, like, here we all are, like, we're, uh, we're perfect people, we, uh, like, never cheat each other or lie, and, and we don't need to wear clothes because there's no sin, like, um, hey, I'm just saying, clothes get sweaty, especially here in New Mexico, <laughs> but... The, the Matrix, baby. Yeah. This idea of free will. Oh, right, the red pill and the blue pill. No, it's the idea of love is what I'm getting at. God would not be a God of love had he not put the tree. Well, sorry, he would still be a God of love. God God would not love humans perfectly, and humans would not be completely made in his image had he not put the tree in the garden. The tree wasn't just a tree. It wasn't just fruit. It wasn't just they broke the rule. This was the first sin. Sin is missing the mark, right, in, in, in Greek. And okay, well, this was just the first example of it. Here we go. The tree was choosing not God. So uh, I'm going to go back to C.S. Lewis. Um, <laughs> in his book, Mere Christianity, in the 13th or 14th chapter, I don't know, don't, don't quote me on that, he talks about the Trinity, that God is a triune God, he's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and he describes it as a perfect dance, right? So it's a perfect dance of perfect love. And if you think about it, if two people are perfectly loving each other, what you're doing is you're completely not thinking about yourself. You're completely selfless, so you're completely thinking about the other person. And what that means then is you're revolving all of your thoughts, all of your actions, everything you do, you're revolving it around what is best for that other person. And so if two people are doing that, what that looks like then is two people revolving their entire lives around each other, and that looks like a dance, because when two people revolve around each other, physically it's a dance, right? And so C.S. Lewis says that's what God has been doing throughout all of recorded history, is Father has been perfectly loving Son and Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit's been perfectly loving Father and Son, and Son has been perfectly loving Father and Holy Spirit. And if there's not a Trinity, that's not a God of love, because love perfect love revolves around someone else, right? So if it's just a single God who's not a trinity, you can have a God that outside of time and outside of creation loves himself, but that's probably pride or, you know, at, at the very least, it's just delighting in, in himself and delighting in his power. Um, but if you have a God who's triune, who's three persons, that's the only way you can actually have a God of love because love has to revolve around something other than self. Love has to be selfless for it to be perfect. And so, you have then, th before time, before creation, a perfect God of love in the perfect dance of the Trinity. Then God creates, and all of creation then is an aspect of revealing God's beauty, right? Trace the traces of transcendence thing. But when God creates man, he said, let, he said, let us make man in our image. And C.S. Lewis says what God did at that time is he basically created something he could extend the hand out to and say, will you join the dance? And so, and Jordan Peterson talks about this a little bit in that life sets itself up as a, like a meta game and a meta narrative, right? That it's a series of games that we play. And so there's some, there's again, some evolutionary psychology in that. It's a series of stories and, and that's how we uh, figure out the world and, and orient. And a dance is both at the same time, a story and a game, right? A dance is a story because it goes to a song and there's a beat, and there's a rhythm and a cadence to it, but it's a game because there's rules to it, right? 
And the most fundamental rule of the dance is you keep dancing with your dance partner, right? And this is stereotypically speaking of dance. I know there's different kinds of dances, but for the general dance, for as, as much as humans have danced throughout all of history, the, the biggest rule is you dance with your partner. And so for God then to create man in his image, to say, I'm inviting you into the dance, well, what's the story of the dance? The story is that it's a dance of love, right? And so it's a dance of perfect love. And so you have to stay in the dance then with your partner. And if you're in the dance, it's love. And if you choose someone else, it's not love. The tree is the choice of not God. The tree is the choice to literally dance with the devil, as it were, right, in, in the garden. And so God sets up the meta story, the, 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 the meta game, and it's the dance that he invited humans into, the perfect dance of love with the Trinity, which is also how the Bible describes heaven and the end of days in Revelation, what it finally gets to after all the destruction and crazy stuff on earth. It's, it's this with God in the same sort of dance as there was in the garden. It's Eden regained is the end of time in the Bible, right? But if the tree is not there, we can't love him because if we love, we choose to stay in the dance. And that's the story of love. Love is a choice. It's not forced. Creation is forced to love God because it's not made in his image. Creation doesn't have free will, right? It's because we have free will that we can choose to love God. And that's what God wants. God doesn't want obedience. God wants love. Now, if you love, you'll obey, right? Which is the same thing as like my wife saying like, you know, hey, please take out the trash. And what she doesn't have to say is, you are my husband. We share the responsibilities. Take out the trash. You're my husband because I love you. You love me. So what she's really saying is, if you love me, take out the trash, right? Even though, <laughs> even though no, like, like no human actually says it that way, right? But it's like, but it's like she'll, she'll give a command and it's like, I'll obey the command because I love her, right? And so then it's, it's a similar give and take with God and us is he gives a command, but it's not like obey this command or I'm damning you to hell forever. It's I want you desperately and I've always wanted you desperately for all of history and all of creation to love me back. Here's how you do it. Right. And, um, so <laughs> back to your question then of, well, why doesn't God just open up the sky and say, Hey, yo, it's me. Here I am. It's, it's Jesus, not, not Muhammad, Jesus. Right. Like, why doesn't he do that? Um, because those aren't the rules of the dance because that's not the rule of love. Because if he did that, what we would then see is not his love. We would see his power on display and we would fall before a king who has all the power in worship, right? And we do that in history, shows that we do that because humans are so prone to following totalitarian governments, right? Like if someone flexes their power in front of us, we'll obey, whether we love them or not. We might hate them, actually. That's the know. story of COVID. Sure, to yeah. To be frank. That's the story of Nazi Germany. That's the story of communist Russia, right? Like yep. that's that's the story of, of the Roman Empire, right? That's the story of Alexander the Great. Like that's, that's the human story is someone flexes their power and will obey, maybe out of fear, maybe out of respect for power, but hardly ever out of love, right? It's when someone says, I love you so much, I'm going to die for you. And if I die for you, it'll make a way for you to love me again. That's the story of vulnerability, of death, of suffering, of sacrifice, right? And so, but it's, it's, it can only be that. It can't be any more than that. Otherwise, it's just another display and flex of power, and there's no love there. 